How's it going everyone? I'm back with uh, my sixth video in this series. Um, this is my MIDI mapping project. Um, basically make, turning a lot of MIDI controllers into a Reaper control surface. Uh, the first few videos I did was for the Machine Mark III, the Behringer X-Touch Mini, the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II, and right here, as you can see, is the Akai MPC Studio version 2, the black version. Um, I got one of these recently because uh, Akai released MPC Beats, you know, the free uh, plug-in slash standalone software, and I was really digging it, so I was like, well, might as well pick up one of these for dirt cheap and map it, because uh, I map pretty much every MIDI controller I get my hands on um, to do some basic Reaper functions. So here's a quick demonstration showing what everything does. All right, so I got this dumb Reaper project open. It's not going to win any awards or anything. It's just a quick, easy demonstration showing stuff. Uh, so, all right, um, here's basically how everything's mapped. With your pad banks, A, B, C, and D on this specific controller, you also have um, encoder banks. So you can have 20 total encoder uh, maps or you know assignments which is really handy. So I have um, across all pad banks, A, B, C, and D, this jogs by measure. It's the clicky encoder. Um, this one jogs by beat, no click. Um, this is zoom horizontally, in and out. Um, this bottom one is select items on the selected track. So if I select the track right here that has a bunch of different items on it, um, you turn this encoder and it just like you know cycles through selecting each item and then from there the encoder above it can move it by the grid setting which is really handy so let's say we want to move this green one and you know maybe the pink one Let's move it anywhere we want it's pretty cool and on bank B this you know like I said this encoder the the jog by measure is the same across all banks this right here adjusts each item by semitone, so you can um, you know, go up five semitones, turn counterclockwise, go down seven semitones, whatever you want to do. It's really handy for like quick loop manipulation. Um, so on bank C and D, oh, actually the other two encoders do nothing on that bank. And then on bank C, those four encoders do nothing, and D, they do nothing. But main one I use is the jog, obviously. Uh, transport does exactly as, as you know you would think it, it would do. Uh, play is play slash stop in Reaper. Um, play start, like let's say we're at measure, I don't know, 11. Uh, it obviously just rewinds and plays from the beginning. And then record obviously you know does exactly what it says. This button over here, erase is assigned to loop on and off. Um, and then I got a bunch of different uh, buttons here uh, that are assigned to various functions of Reaper. Uh, everything's labeled with uh, what they call paper tape. I got this from filmtools.com. It's awesome. It's how they label gear and mixers. And it's basically, you know, super sticky and it never leaves any residue and it's really easy to write on. I love that stuff. And they make it thin enough where it kind of fits in between, you know, like uh, rows of buttons, uh, which is really nice. So basically these two buttons right here are just previous and next track. All right, really easy direct access to all those tracks. Um, these two are set time selection start and end. So basically if I wanted to create a time selection at seven and end it at nine, um, it creates an instant time selection, uh, two to three, and also the cursor jumps to the beginning of the time selection when you set the endpoint. It's a custom reaper action, so I think that's really handy. Um, this one right here is uh, select item on the selected track and this button right here is split item so let's uh, pick a different track let's pick a track 5 and we will scroll over by beat with this encoder and we'll select this and if we want to split it a couple different ways we just go split you know split split really handy and then obviously we can move it you know if we want just out of the way it's really handy um, and then this next row, uh, obviously this is previous and next track. Um, this is previous and next marker. So I have six markers in there and you can just jump to any part, you know, of your arrangement. And this sample button is set to quick quantize. So you record a MIDI item and you just hit that and it instantly quantizes it, uh, to whatever 
grid setting and um, you know gr uh, division that you've set your the last time you were in the MIDI editor remembers you know like uh, obviously 16th note is a common quantized value so as long as you set something to 16th note in the grid you just quick quantize it and it just instantly does it to that which is really handy this is a arm selected track button so basically if we were on let's see this track right here we just disarm this we arm track one arm track three disarm track three arm track five right really handy uh, this is the insert marker button the numeric pad so you know you jog let's see say we want a marker you know another one here and another one here um, the uh, undo does exactly what it says it doesn't need a label because it's just called undo um, browser opens and closes the media explorer which is really handy for dragging stuff in and you can use um, let's see I don't know where I was going with that I'm a little tired <laughs> I uh, I'm just I just wanted to try to get another video up so I apologize if I lose my train of thought. Um, anyway, yeah. So these last two buttons are really important. Uh, actually, not last two, but uh, the next two. Up here is called Show Hide FX Chain on the selected track. So obviously, the uh, track one has a virtual instrument on it. And by clicking FX Chain, it shows what's in there. So you can tweak everything um, then hide it just really handy. So say you're like jogging, you know, through your arrangement and you just need to see that for a second and then you're jogging again. It's just great to show and hide it without having to use the mouse at all. And then this button down here is called cycle FX in the FX chain. So track two has two different effects or two different instruments, uh, instrument and effect. So track two has the Valhalla super massive, which is an awesome free plugin and before it is a, a free plugin called um, Tal Noisemaker. So basically, you can just cycle between them when that window is open, which is really awesome. And when you're ready, you know, when you're done tweaking, you could just um, close your FX chain. And those are just some buttons that I use all the time when I'm just navigating stuff. And then these three right here uh, basically just track mute. Um, so whatever track is selected, it just mutes it. Um, it, it actually is called track mute, which is really handy. Um, focus is really cool. Like this, uh, let me show you. So let's say we open this FX chain and then we'll go to track two and we'll open that FX chain. So now, you know, the, the noise maker is basically hiding, you know, the, the Uno LX. So what focus does is it just, what it just cycles through the different plugins and shows, you know, like that one's in focus. That one's not, yeah, or now it's not. Um, and then this button right here is called toggle windows. So if you have like a bunch of plugins open on different tracks, you just literally click that and it just, it just hides everything. And obviously it opens them up. So it, it, like it's, it's more handy as a close all windows button because you don't want to, like say you have like 15 plugin windows that you just want instantly closed. You just hit that toggle windows and it closes them all. But um, hitting it again loads them all, you know, like on the screen. So it's it's better to use as a close windows uh, button. Um, so yeah, focus again. You know that one's in focus. That one is. There you go. Um, so that's pretty much how it works. And then um, what I usually use uh, for you know uh, drum pad stuff like uh, machine or you know MPC beats or poise, which is one of my favorite drum plugins. Um, I use Bank D and uh, hang on, I gotta select that track. Uh, where's it at? Right here. Arm it. Disarm this guy. And I'm, you know, again, I'm doing this all mouseless. So right here, um, I have poise mapped to, you know, basically C2 um, and up. You know, the the MIDI notes. And if I want to look at poise, I just go to you know FX chain, and I have basically the MPC beats like you know after it in the chain. And I'm going to close this, uh, you know, Tal Uno. So I have these encoders uh, just mapped to like edit sample, um, which is really handy. So bank D is like my poise bank. You know, right here is the end point. This is the start point. You know, zoom in your waveform um, and then scroll, you know, if it's really zoomed in. And that's really handy. But honestly, since MPC Beats came out, I'm not using poise as often. Because uh, number one, the um, I use that focus button to show MPC beats. 
uh, whoops, not focus, uh, cycle FX. That's what I needed. There we go. So this is, you know, in MIDI control mode, but, um, obviously you get a huge waveform when in the MPC beats window. So poise has taken like a little bit of a back burner since Akai released this for free, really digging this. Um, but you know, poise is still one of my favorite drum plugins because it's just so easy and you can layer eight, eight, uh, samples per pad, like with the greatest of ease, you just click and drag. It's like, it takes no time at all. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it's mapped. Um, there's nothing, the, the sad thing about the MPC studio is you cannot map this, you know, the, the main jog wheel, which sucks, but at least they have this clicky one in the corner, which is nice. And I'm left-handed. So I find that pretty handy. Um, but, uh, you know, you can't use the cursor pad that's on, you know, not mappable. The data minus and plus isn't mappable. Window is not mappable. Uh, you know, shift, obviously you can't use that as a modifier. You can't do these two. You can't do that. You can map these, but they're on channel one as, as the transport is too. I don't like to usually uh, do MIDI maps on channel one because it interferes with a lot of things, but I have this mapped because these are fixed assignments. So I just kind of said, all right, I'm just going to use channel one for play, start, play slash stop, and then record. Um, this is really handy. And, you know, uh, note repeat, again, it's not mappable. So they, they let you map a lot of stuff, but not everything. But it's still a pretty awesome controller, uh, all things considered. And it'd be great if these function buttons were mappable too. Uh, F1 functions is the MIDI uh, preference stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, you get a lot. Uh, you get a lot of mappable stuff. You can't do full level. You can't do 16 level, but everything else is pretty mappable. So that's awesome. And I really should get some sleep. It's like 2.07 in the morning and <laughs> I'm usually up decently late, but it's just been a long, long day. Um, so I should definitely wrap this up. But um, if you guys have any questions or comments, um, please leave them below. Uh, if you like this video, if you found it helpful and cool, uh, obviously, click like um uh what else oh subscribe if you're not subscribed uh, it helps the youtube algorithm and it helps me get um some of this stuff out there a little more um but uh yeah so i plan to do more of these videos as i you know have motivation and time uh probably do machine mark ii uh machine jam machine studio uh, which I did a, a, a video for without talking. It just kind of demonstrated stuff like many months ago um, uh, using the White Machine Studio. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, like how exactly it's used. So I wanted to do one for every single controller. Um, I have to do one for Beat Step, Beat Step Pro. Um, and that's pretty much most of all the controllers that I still own. Uh, some of the other stuff I mapped, I don't own anymore. Um, but yeah, I really dig the MPC Studio uh, version two. Just a dope controller. It's really thin. Uh, it's built very well and it's just cool. So uh, I wanted to do a video show on that. So again, hope you guys found this helpful. I'm Chris Calder and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and don't forget, wear your mask and don't be a douchebag. And yeah, so I will see you. Much love to you. Good night.